Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to be looking at uh, making a simple uh, dice game. It's going to have five dice and a button. You click the button and it'll roll the dice and it'll, it'll show you the result. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll open up Visual Studio. And we'll click on File, New Project. We'll choose Windows Form Application. And we'll call it Dice Game. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and then click OK. Alright, so it's going to go ahead and open up your form and design view here. So what we're going to need to do, if you don't see toolbox right here on the side of your screen, we're actually going to go click View, Toolbox, and go ahead and pin that up. Well, pin it up so it shows. Uh, Solution Explorer and Properties Windows will need those as well. So if you don't have those up, you can click View, uh, Solution Explorer's there. And properties window is right there. So open those up and pin them. Uh, with their form selected, we'll scroll up. We'll leave the name as form one. Uh, go ahead and go on down. Make sure your auto size is set to false. And we'll go down until we see the maximize box. And we'll set that to false. What that's going to do is it's going to disable this button right here on your form so they can't click it. Uh, go to maximum size. Uh, for this we'll just put it to 800 by 600. You'll notice it didn't change over here. That's because right now it's set to a 300 by 300 and it can be anywhere from 0 by 0 to 800 by 600. So if we go here and change the minimum size to 800 by 600, you'll see it automatically updates this size and the form itself updates. Uh, and let's go down to text and we'll just uh, erase that. And what that's going to do is it's going to change this right here. So let's go ahead and call it Dice Game. And you'll see that it's there. And if we go ahead and run the project, you'll see that you have Dice Game here. And you cannot click the Maximize button. And you cannot drag out the form to make it large or small and we could have done that by making like a fixed uh, single or a fixed 3D or something like that but this is a simple way to do it just to show you how you can set a size so we'll close out of that and we'll go over here I'm gonna get a label you could do a, uh, a picture box if you wanted but I'm gonna drag a label out and with the label selected we'll go over here to the properties window uh, we'll leave the name as it is for now. We'll change that in a little bit and I'll show you why. Now you'll notice that the auto size here is set to true. So it's actually going to fit whatever's in the label. It's going to automatically size to it. So if we go down to size and we try to change that, let's say 50 by 50, it's not going to uh, it's not going to change the size unless we go to auto size and set that to false. Now where we already put in 50 by 50, it, it actually stored that. And if we go down here, you'll see that it's updated and made it that size. So let's go ahead and take the text out. What we're going to do is we're actually going to put images inside these labels. So what we'll need to do is we need to add our images in. So if you've downloaded the images off of the, the website, you should see... Here they are. So if you just hover over, you see it's a 50 by 50 PNG file. So what we're going to do to add that is click on your project name. I, I named my dice game. Whatever you named yours will be showing right there. So you right click, go down to properties, and we'll go over here to resources. If we click on that, you can click here to add resource, the little arrow right beside of it. And we'll click on add existing file. And then we'll navigate to wherever it is that we stored um, the images. And highlight all the images and click open. And you'll notice they are now inside of our resources. And you'll see that it's made a folder and it stuck all the images inside there. So I'll just right click and click save. Close that out. Now let's, uh, with your label selected, come up to image right here and you'll see that all the images are inside this box if we wouldn't have added them first they wouldn't have been anything here 
and you can click on them to see what they look like. So we're going to choose dice blank for the for the default. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and paste it until we get five of them onto the form. So control C and then you can hit control V to paste it in or you can right click and do it that way. So now we'll select the first image. You'll see it says label one. If we select the second one, you'll see it says label two. So we're going to go ahead and uh, change the first one from label one. Keep the one in there and just type, uh, I'm going to put LBL for label, underscore, and dice, and leave the one there. So now I'm going to highlight the LBL underscore dice and copy it. Click on the second one, highlight the word label, and paste over that. And do it for the remaining ones. If you look, we have label underscore dice one, two, three, four, and five. So now, if you just want to shift click on them and highlight them all, you can drag them around. Since we're not going to hard code where they're actually going to be at in the form, we can just drag them where we want and we're happy where they're at. And then go ahead and click off them. And if you run it now, you'll see that the images are now showing up right there. So now we need a button. So just grab the button here and click it over, drop it anywhere you want, and we'll go over to the name. And we'll just backspace that out and we'll call it BTN underscore roll dice. Now this is just a name like you would call it from inside the code. You, it doesn't actually change the uh, the text on the button. We'll just make sure auto size is false. And then we will go down to size and we'll just make this 200 by 50. It's a decent size button. And go ahead and remove the text here and put roll dice. And you'll see the text is upgraded here. Or updated, I mean. Now we can just drop that wherever we want. It's kind of center on there if you want. Okay, and then you play it now. You'll see that we have images and a button. The button doesn't do anything yet. So now right, we're done with the toolbox. I'm not going to put any labels or anything up there. So and, uh, unpin that. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and start writing the code for this. So first thing we'll do is we'll double click on our form. And now what that's going to do is that's going to add this right here. And I'll go into that in just a second. Go ahead and click back into your design view. Double click your button. And it's going to put this here. And I'll I'll show you how it's actually calling these. So if you look right here at this initialize component, this is actually if you expand form1.cs in your solution explorer, you'll see something called form1.designer.cs. If you right click on that and go to view code, everything that we've done in this design view, we put the labels in there, we renamed them, set the image properties, the text properties, the button and all that. If you go over here and you expand this region right here, you'll see that it's automatically created the labels for us and the button and everything that we did to it setting the image, the location, the name, uh, the size all that is already generated for us. We didn't have to actually come in here and code any of this. So, and if you'll see here right here form1 underscore load if you'll notice right here when the form is loaded it adds a new event handler to it and it's called form1 underscore load now if you look at the button when it's clicked a new event handler has been added to that button underscore roll dice underscore click which has been generated right here for us automatically so let's go ahead and uh, just set up the regions here we won't be actually be editing the using statement so but what this allows us to do, instead of, like right here, you see how it says system.windows.forms.autoscalemode.font. All this, the reason I have to put that is because they don't have a using statement up here, so they have to actually write it out all the way, like system.windows.forms.label. Now, if you look up here, we have system.windows.forms. So, if we were actually going here, we could just type label. 
and the rest of it's already done for us. As you can see here, when you put your mouse over, it says system.windows.forms.label, which is exactly what's right here. So we're not actually going to be using a label though. So what we'll do is uh, set up a region here for decoration, and let's go ahead and we'll declare our arrays, and we'll also be using a random. So let's uh, we'll need an image array. And we'll call that dice images. Uh, we'll need an integer array. And we'll call that dice. That's going to hold their the number for each of our dice and we'll need a random so let's go ahead and set that okay so we don't need this anymore we're done with this okay so okay and then we already know what's going on right here so this is what's going to happen when the form loads so let's go ahead and uh We'll initialize and populate our arrays and set up a random here. So, dice images is equal to a new image array. Now it's going to give us a red line here. Now the reason it's going to do that is because we haven't actually uh, specified the the size of the array. So, we got one, and then six more. That's seven images total. So what we'll do is go ahead and put seven here. And we'll go ahead and we'll populate the array one by one. And arrays start with an index of zero. So, we'll go to properties, dot resources, and we want the first one to be the blank. So, dice underscore blank. Now we need to do the same thing for the, the next six. So, let's go ahead and just copy and we'll paste this six times. And all we got to do now is just increase index by one at a time here oops well and then we'll actually come over here and we'll just uh, put it to the images okay so now what we need to do is we need to set up our integer array which if you look up here we call it dice. So let's go here and dice equals new integer array. Now what we're going to do here is we're actually it's going to be five dice that we're going to have on our board. So and let's go ahead and we'll set it up like that right there. It's basically doing the same thing. So the zero index is just going to be zero the one index is going to be zero just like we did here except we're just doing it in a shorter format and we need to set up a random so let's go ahead and rand equals new random okay so now we're done with when the form loads it's going to do all this so let's go ahead and look at the button click um, we're going to have to actually make our own method here so let's go ahead and So we're going. To, it's going to be a private and a void. It's not going to return anything. And it's only going to be used in this class. So we set that to a private. Since we're not returning anything, we'll set it to void, and we'll just call it roll dice. And we're not going to pass it any parameters. And then when we click the button, we want it to be passed in roll dice. So let's go ahead, and you'll see that it's already inside the list here. So you can just enter. Now, if we try this out we have no errors so now whenever we click this button even though it's not doing anything we click this button what's going to happen is it's going to call this and whatever is inside this is it's actually going to run that part so let's go ahead and what we need to do when a button is clicked is we need to roll each of the dice and then depending on what number came up we need to set the image to that for each of our labels up there so let's go ahead and We'll need to loop through each of our dice, so set up a for loop, and i equals zero. So we'll start at zero, as long as i is less than dice dot length, then we'll increment i. Now, what this is saying is, we'll start at zero, 
and then while i is equal to less than dice dot length so we have a length of five so the first uh first iteration is going to be zero so I'll go to this one then it's going to be one two three four and then it's going to end so what we need to do is we need to set the dice at the index of whatever i is currently as it's going through the loop so the first one's going to be zero so it's actually going to be pointing to this one we're going to set that equal to a new random number which would be uh, rand dot next now inside here we're going to put a one because we want it to be from one to six now if we was actually to do one comma six that's not going to return a one to six it's going to return a one to five because this number here is actually going to be the first number that's outside of the range so if we wanted one to six we'd actually have to do one to six plus one so you could actually just put seven there but the reason I like to put a plus one on it is if I'm looking through code and I sometimes I would get confused you know like if I put one to seven here I would think okay I'm looking for a number between one to seven instead of just so it's easier for me if I put a plus one on on my randoms you can do either way it's a, just whatever preference you prefer and now we need to set up the labels so we'll do lbl underscore and you'll see it's already got the labels that we set up so take the first one we want to set the image the label to equal uh, dice images. Now we need to tell it which one that we need to set it to. So let's say the first uh, first time through this loop I'll be zero. So we'll be actually looking at this number. If it sets it to say three, okay, so it's past the three, then it's going to set it to properties.resource dice three. So it's going to set it to this image. Now how do we get that? So all we got to do is do dice zero. Since this is the first label, we want to look at the first dice in the array. So it'll be this one. So if it was actually past a three, this is going to be the same thing as like putting three here, which was going to call this image. So now we need to do it for the rest of the labels. So we have a five of total. So just copy that and paste it. Now what we'll do is we'll just increase these by one. And we'll increase all these by one here. So now if we test this out, we'll see if we click the button, you'll see that it sets it to it. Now in the next part of this tutorial what we'll do is we'll actually set it to where like when you roll the dice it'll tell you that like for this one it would be you've got a six high. Uh, this one it would be you've got one pair. Uh, this one would be one pair. And this would be two pairs. You've got two fours and two fives. And we could display that to the user then maybe later down the road we can make like a local multiplayer game where each player rolls the dice and whoever's got the the best hand would win, kind of like a poker hand. So um, I hope this was informative and, and useful, and um, I guess I'll see you next time.